Putin bad news. Being weak can be fatal. This war must end because of these reasons why Putin invaded Ukraine. Fearing retaliation from NATO, Russian President Vladimir Putin refrained from invading Ukraine in 2022. He invaded because he thought NATO was weak, he had exhausted all other options for regaining control of Ukraine, and putting a pro-Russian government in place in Kyiv would be simple and risk-free. Instead of protecting Russia from an imaginary foe, he set out to increase Russian influence, eliminate Ukraine as a sovereign nation, and destroy NATO. By the end of 2021, Putin was convinced that Russia could launch a full-scale invasion of Ukraine with little risk of retaliation from the West. This would allow Russia to achieve its two main objectives, break the unity of NATO and establish Russian control over Ukraine. Putin has long sought these ends, but a confluence of events in 2019 and 2020 convinced him of the urgency of the situation and the historic significance of the opportunity to seize control of Ukraine. The Kremlin's inability to coerce Ukraine into accepting Russia's demands, Putin's isolation in an ideological and introspective bubble during the COVID-19 pandemic, and Western responses to global events and Russian threats in 2021 all contributed to Putin's conviction. By late 2021, Putin had already decided that he wanted war to achieve his goals, and nothing the West or Kyiv could offer diplomatically short of capitulating to his maximalist demands would have convinced him to give up the historic opportunity he saw. Putin has spent years trying to split NATO and take over the Ukrainian government. From the beginning of his presidency, Putin has had four main goals, to secure his own rule, to consolidate power within Russia, to restore Russia to its former great power status, and to create a multipolar world order in which Russia has a say in major international decisions. These fundamental goals have always depended on establishing control over Ukraine and weakening U.S. influence. Putin's efforts to undermine NATO and Western solidarity have nothing to do with any real or imagined threat to Russian military interests on NATO's part. Putin's disregard for the possibility of a NATO attack on Russia has been evidenced by the country's military stance under his leadership. Since the year 2000, the development of large mechanized forces to guard Russia's borders with NATO has not been a top priority for the Russian military. In 2021 and 2022, Russia sent the bulk of its anti-NATO forces to Ukraine, even though that country posed no threat to Russia on the battlefield. In 2023, when Russia's rhetoric against NATO was at its peak, Moscow nonetheless kept pulling troops and hardware back from its land borders with the alliance in order to back the Ukrainian conflict. Putin's paranoia about NATO manifested itself in his fixation on what he called the West's color revolutions, or hybrid warfare operations, in various post-Soviet states, including Ukraine. Putin has never been particularly worried about NATO as a threat to Russia, but he has been concerned about the loss of control over Russia's perceived sphere of influence. Putin's real beef with NATO and the West has been that they have presented an alternative to countries that Putin considered to be within Russia's sphere of influence or even control. Putin's worst nightmares were realized when countries dared to choose the West, or at least the way of life, governance, and values that the West represented, over Moscow, manifesting themselves in the color revolutions that terrified Putin. Putin saw NATO and the West as a threat because they existed and promoted their own values alongside Russia's. Furthermore, many ex-Soviet states preferred to work with NATO and the West rather than Russia, which Putin believed diminished Russia's sway in the region. To Putin, however, re-establishing Russia's status as a great power required nothing less than the ability to exert control over former Soviet states. Russia's rightful place in the world, in Putin's view, was being blocked by the West and former Soviet states that preferred to partner with the West even without fully breaking with Russia.